Greetings and salutations DIY auto enthusiasts on YouTube. I am back again for another small video on a, another one of my cars. You know, again, I have a, a bit of a fleet. Uh, actually, this time it's on my wife's 2013 Kia Sorento all-wheel drive with the V6 3.5 liter engine. It has just under 80,000 miles under, I believe. Well, the story here is uh, things were going fine. I had told myself a couple of weeks ago, you know, haven't done a video in a while. I still need to do a video of my neighbor's Tahoe down the street. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, of course, I cursed myself by doing that because maybe a day or so after I said that, my wife's car here came up with a small issue. I kept hearing this sound, and this sound, if you've ever heard a power steering pump go out, it sounded just like the power steering pump. And I thought, well, okay, you know, I could fix that. It's a bit of a booger because you have to go into the car to do it, take splash shields off, so forth and so on. But uh, that apparently is not it at this point because when you turn the car, the groan does not increase or decrease. So um, when I'm listening on top, it doesn't sound as if in the back and that's where the power steering pump is. It's toward the firewall, and uh, I'll bring the camera a little bit closer in a minute and show you where it's at. But I would have expected the sound, because of increased load, when you turn the steering rack right and left, for it to increase and then decrease when you straighten up. Now, it does have a, a tendency to be the loudest when the engine is cold, like it is today. Here I am in North Carolina. It's the middle of July, or actually the latter part of July. It's been hotter than Hades. Humidity a thousand percent. And today is actually a fairly cool day, probably in low 80s and uh, medium humidity. But if the car warms up, you hear the sound less and less. So again, it does have a tendency to do it on a cold start. Now the problem is, I don't have anyone to hold the camera for me. And uh, there were a couple of things I, I would try and listen to see if I could pinpoint. Now you're talking a bunch of pulleys here. You're talking uh, the crankshaft, which that's not going to be it. You're talking the power steering. You're talking idler pulley. You're talking a tensioner pulley. You're talking air conditioning compressor pulley. You're talking the camshaft pulley. And you're talking an alternator pulley. And it's like, it's very difficult, again, because everything is on the passenger side to hear exactly where this is coming from. So I do have one of the old uh, stethoscopes, mechanic stethoscopes, but it's not worth a crap. It's, it was a cheap one. So I'm gonna go back to the old trick of listening using the screwdriver, but with an enhancement. Um, I watch Eric O on South Main Auto quite a bit, as well as Eric the car guy, and if you haven't been listening to uh, his videos or watching his videos here lately he's on a bit of a hiatus but uh, Eric O, South Main Auto, uh, Eric the Car Guy, uh, sometimes Brian's Mobile, uh, Ivan on Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics, uh, Matt Schrodinger, he's funny, uh, Matt Schrodinger on Schrodinger's Box and Scanner Danner. Now what I like about uh, Eric O is you know very practical approach and in this particular case he used a lot of common sense it's kind of scary putting a screwdriver on a pulley and putting your ear to it because of the obvious danger there. Uh, so in one of his little videos, I just happened to do a search in the YouTube, he uses a screwdriver and on the end of it, he puts like uh, an old, I've got it, it just happens, uh, windshield wiper fluid Rain-X jug, about a gallon. And what he'll do is he'll use that as a megaphone. Smart trick. Common sense doesn't cost you anything. So let me put that together and I'll show you how he did it. And then I'm going to show you the engine compartment, how tight things are. All right, let me move back here. Let's see. Isn't this the bee's knees? So, you know, here's like a 16 inch screwdriver. And I cut the end off of the Rain-X bottle. And on the spout, let's see, there we go, aim it. On the spout, you put the screwdriver handle. And it just so happened this handle fits nicely. So what this does is it makes a megaphone. 
Now, if you go on to his video about this, you're going to hear a noticeable difference. As a matter of fact, he actually made an error. He thought it was one tensioner when it was actually the other. But when he put this on there, there was a notable difference in the sound. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll try and video this. If not, again, not right now, I'm going to take the camera down. I'm going to show you everything I have to get to in order to do this. All right, I'm going to do the best I can here. All right, so if you look down here, you're at the uh, front end of the car on the passenger side, and you can see there's not a lot of room. Now, if you look at the very bottom, there's a, uh, let's angle over here. There's the crankshaft pulley down here, the big silver one that's down there where the light is. Now, if you work your way forward, Actually, I'm losing light. Let's try this again. Okay, let's try this again. So, looking, again, I am on the front passenger side. And so, if you look at the bottom of the screen, that's where the wheel well is going to be. Now, if I pick up that particular pulley, that's crankshaft. And if I work my way forward, the one on top there that has the bolt sticking out, that's going to be the idler tension pulley. This black one is going to be the idler pulley. So there's the tensioner and there's the idler. And the black one down there that you see, very hard to see. There you go. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. See that? That's going to be the AC compressor. And then forward of that, let's see if I can focus, that one right there, that's going to be the alternator. So look at all these pulleys. Now, I've got to go up underneath and show you some more. Boy, i got to do some editing here. Alright, so now I'm underneath on the passenger front wheel well. So, here is your power steering pump. There's your crank. There's that tensioner. So it's going to be easier for get my screwdriver here. See, I had to pull a couple of splash shields here, which wasn't too bad. Up here, again, let me tilt. And there's your AC compressor. I hope it's nothing expensive like that. But this is a, a different design. Oh, in order to remove this belt, too, it took me a while to figure this one out. Now, here's your tensioner pulley. And you would think, since it's an automatic tensioner, you would think you put your wrench there and turn it counterclockwise to loosen up the belt. Eh, sorry, wrong answer. You have to put it on this welded on nut, which I believe is a 17 millimeter. Problem is, from up top, you can't see it. You have to get a mirror to find it. So it's actually probably better to take the shields off to get to it. Um, you can use a standard socket but you need a very long handled socket wrench to have enough fulcrum to get in there and turn that or you might have to use a little bit of a cheater bar it's not hard it's just you need length you can't really put a standard box in wrench back here because you have to clear this actual pulley so that could be a bit of a pistol it took me a while to find it and of course don't do it when the engine's hot because man there's not much space in there you stick your arm in there you're gonna know it and I found out the hard way wasn't thinking so there's your serpentine belt. I'm going to take that off and look at it too. So what I'm going to do now is, I've, since it is cold, I'm going to put the camera up close. And I'm going to start the engine. I'm going to jump out. And then I want you to hear this particular sound. All right, here we go. So, 
we are again looking at the um, idler pulley I believe hold on let's make sure yes because there's your tensioners left that's the idler pulley now I'm going to uh, crank the car up and touch that bolt from up top here and I want you to hear the sound so bear with me Check the sound out. I say that's fairly substantial. Let's try it again. Now what I'm going to do is stop the engine, disconnect, and I'm going to go to the tensioner pulley. All right, let's do that uh, tensioner pulley. And you're going to notice a big difference. Notice how quiet it is? So I know it's not the tensioner. I'm going to do the power steering pump in the back here. Got to be careful though. Touching the power steering pump. Whoop, I'm hitting the camera there, sorry. That's power steering pump in the back, nice and quiet. That's near the crank. Water pump's up here at the top. Nice and quiet. I already checked the alternator. I did that uh, before I took this camera down. So, I need to go into town and get me an idler pulley. So, to be continued. Actually, before I head into town, a couple of reminders here. Number one, safety, safety, safety. You know, I've got this car jacked up on a jack, and I have a jack stand underneath. Never depend upon a jack to hold your car up. I have seen the end results of when they have failed, and it's not pretty. Um, I also disconnected the negative terminal of my battery here, and I went ahead and used that 17 millimeter socket and moved it counterclockwise when you face it, that's the tensioner pulley, and decided to look at the belt too. I also marked my belt with an arrow so that if I had to put it back on, I would put it back on in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the direction from which I took it off. Um, some people say that if you do it the other way, that it might squeal and squeak and whatever. So I just went ahead and marked it, made an arrow um, to the outside. See, here's Prince. This is a Kia. There. So it just so happens that the print, you can see, I'm hoping you can see this, it didn't have a silver marker, but there's an arrow here. I just didn't happen to see the marking there. But I did mark it, but I think I'm going to go ahead and get a new belt, simply because I went to this much trouble to get it apart. I might as well go ahead and put a new belt on it. I mean, it's uh, might be an original belt for all I know. We bought this car used, but... The thing that made me decide that is you see some of the threads there on the edges. I don't know if that's normal, I'm not a mechanic, but 
it doesn't please me it looks worn I'm gonna go ahead and replace it it may be nothing but for the cost what the hey now I looked at the grooves this is a five groove type pulley it looked good there weren't any cracks nothing spectacular other than some of the threads showing through. Oh, the other part of the test is too, once I get this uh, particular pulley out, spin it, see if it makes noise. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that before I take it out. And then, like I say, go into town. So let me see if I can go ahead and pull it out. All right, I'm back from town. I've got a few parts. Um, once I got the idler pulley off, I decided to go ahead and pull the tensioner pulley, which is on this mechanism, and see if there was anything wrong with it. Now, although it didn't really make any noise with the screwdriver trick, I found that it had a little bit of slop in it. Now, it, I'm going to see if I can do it enough that you can see it move when I twist it. A little bit of slop. I got the new one, I decided to go ahead for the price and get a new one, and it rides true. Whereas this one, it doesn't really make any noise, but it just has a little more slop in it that I am uh, comfortable with. Can't really hear it, but I, it's more of a feel. So I went ahead and bought a new one. Now to get it out, it's a there was like a bolt here and there was the pivot bolt there and that's like a uh, T30 I believe so I had to put it in the vise and pop it off um, I also went ahead and got the new belt that was normal for the belt when I looked at the new belt you can kind of see the threads but um, it's been on there at least two years so obviously it does have some stretch I probably could have reused it but again for the cost I might as well go ahead and replace it by the time I get my uh, discounts at Advance Auto, got a Deco belt, it came out to about $22. So that way I'm starting out with two new pulleys and a belt. I don't believe in just throwing parts in there, but I figured because of the slop in this one, I would just go ahead and uh, replace it. I don't have to replace the whole mechanism. So let me go get the uh, idler pulley. Surprisingly, when you spin it, it does not make any noise. But I tell you, when we put the screwdriver up to it, it made three times the noise of the tensioner pulley. There's no real slop in this one. I don't really feel a lot of give. But you can actually see a little bit of it. Just a little bit. Again, it doesn't really make any noise. So I think maybe this was early the signs of an early failure so let me go ahead and start putting this stuff back together and I'll show you in reverse you know it's pretty easy to get off even for one person but uh, let me go ahead and put that new bolt on the tensioner now the T30 bolt on the tensioner I couldn't find any kind of a spec that said uh, how many foot-pounds of torque those other bolts have torque but I couldn't find anything, so I'm going to make it tight. You know, you don't have to manhandle it, but do make it tight. So I'm going to go back and grab that and put the new tensioner pulley on. So here's the bolt. I think I said uh, T30. It's actually a T50 Torx. And it slides into the tensioner and then the tensioner pulley. Then it fits into the tensioner here. Now give me a moment, I'm going to tighten this thing up on the bench, vice. Alright, so I put things back in, and I went ahead and used a little fluid film, rust and corrosion protector. Let's see if we can get that so you can see it. How's that? It's always nice, figure it's in a wet location. Don't forget your little cap here, you got to pop that back on. I'll show you everything back together there so now I'm gonna go back to the car and put it on the car pardon the angle here but uh, doing this on the ground 
All right, so I put this back together. Let's see if I can zoom in. There's two bolts. All right, now if you look way up here where I'm pointing, there's one bolt there, and that's a smaller bolt. That's like a uh, 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter socket fits that, but it's 13 foot pounds to torque it. This bolt down here was a 17 millimeter and it was 60 foot pounds. The nut, the welded nut, and that's where you put your wrench in order to turn it counterclockwise to loosen this up. I think I said it was a 17 in the beginning of the video. It's actually a 19. All right, so there's a 12 millimeter but 13 foot-pounds, about what a spark plug is. This is a 17 millimeter, 60 foot-pounds, and that's the welded nut. It's a 19 millimeter socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and now put the regular idler pulley back on there, because that's up above this. Now, it was easier to put the bolt in from underneath on this idler pulley, but it was easier to tighten it up from the top, actually. So, um, use a little fluid film on all the bolts. I went ahead and put this in. That's a 14 millimeter bolt. Let's see if I can get more light on it. There we go. And it says uh, about 40 foot pounds. I really couldn't get the torque wrench in there. So I guesstimated. When you've done enough, you can pretty much get close to this torque spec. It's not going to go anywhere. So now what I'm going to do is before I put the belt on is I'm going to take a little brake clean and I'm going to spritz down everything just to make sure there's no oil. If you've got oil on there then you get slippage. But uh, before I put the belt on I will also kind of wash my hands or put some gloves on so I don't get oil all over the, the belt. But I'm about ready to put the belt on so let me spritz it with the old brake clean. So here we are. The pulleys are back on belt is back on. Uh, if anybody owes you any money or owes you a favor, now is the time to collect. If you can get someone in here to help you, a second set of hands doesn't hurt. The only issue I had was right up here, the belt just wouldn't fit in the grooves. Right at the very top, just a smidge. So I think I took my, uh, I think it's 24 millimeter socket, put it on the crankshaft, bumped it about an eighth of an inch and it popped right in. So always take pictures of how your belt goes. Sometimes it's on the hood of the car, sometimes it's not. So I took photographs, I checked my routing, I make sure everything is correct, I double checked, I triple checked, everything seems to be good and in a second, let me get up here top side, In a second, I'm going to crank her up, and let's see if my repair job took care of the noise. Always make sure you're recording. Let's give it a shot. Much better. Much better. So, it leads me to believe that we had premature failure of at least two of the tensioners. I didn't like the wobble in the tensioner pulley, and, uh, or I should say pulleys. So, I didn't like the wobble in the tensioner pulley, so I replaced that. Uh, the idler pulley was definitely loud, although it didn't have any wobble, so it, it can fool you. Um, Eric O's little trick with the magnification using the long screwdriver and the bottle worked quite well. So now I just have to button things up. Um, a few bolts, you know, splash shield, put the cover back on, and we should be done. Okay, uh, just as I was finishing this up, 
the rain came. And I mean, I was down to picking up my tools. So I wanted to run this one more time. I cranked it up. It's only run for about 60 seconds. No more groan. So it did end up being two tensioners. I'm sorry, one tensioner, one idle pulley. And I went ahead and just changed the belt anyway. So again, the, uh, the loudest of the two happened to be the tensioner pulley by virtue of the megaphone. And again, the, the tensioner I didn't like because of the wobble, so I just went ahead and replaced it too. I'm going to uh, return this car to my wife. Um, I'm sure you can feel the sadness in the air. She had to take my car to work today, which is a 2013 Toyota Highlander. Collective sigh. Don't tell her I said that. If it gets it on Facebook, I'm a dead man. You're going to find my crumpled body out on the highway because I'm always teasing her about that. Um, oh, in the process, too, I just happened to look at the front brake pads. You know, 70% of your braking's up front. So I noticed on that uh, passenger side, I'm getting pretty thin. So that'll be the next project, is doing a front brake job. The rears are looking pretty good. I've, I've still got some good life there. But I'm going to go do a brake job probably in the next week or so. Again, sad, sad story. My wife may have to use my 2013 Highlander. I know. Again, collective sign. Let me uh, come over here and I'll show you what parts and some part numbers. All right, so here's the uh, tensioner pulley. It was a Deco. Got this all at um, Advanced Auto Parts. It was part 89133. Then there was the idler pulley. It was a Lightens or Littens. It said OEM quality, and it was part 900501A as an alpha. The belt was a Deco, Carquest Deco, 5060975. Some basic tools. Um, the Torx was probably the one tool people may not have. It was 3 8 inch drive Torx T50. Otherwise, it was some uh, generalized... 3 eighths and 1 quarter inch drive sockets, screwdrivers, pick, that's to get those little plastic caps off. You know, I had a torque wrench. You don't have to torque this stuff, but you do have to know not to torque it down until it strips and back it off half a turn. Um, I thought this was a neat idea. I need to send a little shout out to Eric O on his South Main Auto channel. That uh, was pretty neat. Oh, and I got these big screwdrivers at Harbor Freight. It's what I call sacrificial tools. So I got uh, two sets, a uh, 16 inch and 22 inch long. And that made a big difference. That way I'm not sticking my head nor my hair anywhere near those um, pulleys and belts. By the time I did the discount, if you know the discount codes for Advanced Auto, it was like $90 for everything. I got a 20% discount. The 30% discount code didn't work. Been using it for a couple of years, but it did not work in this case. All right, so let me go ahead and end this video. Everything's triple checked, double checked. Um, it was a fairly easy job. It's just a whole lot better if you've got a rack. But you know, in my driveway, my garage is full of crap. I got to clean it out. In my driveway, put a cardboard box down over here. Took care of everything. Taking care of business, as they say. So uh, I'd appreciate it if you give me either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I don't mind uh, constructive criticism. What I don't like is when people come on there and get foul mouth. If you get foul mouth, I'm going to block you. Totally unnecessary. But I would appreciate your comments. And uh, you know my credo. I'll fix your car. But it won't go far. <laughs>